Today we will discuss the theory of Big Push, which was uh, given by Paul Rosenstein Rodan. It is a theory of uh, balanced growth. So let's come to the uh, introduction. Uh, and what is the idea behind this theory? So the idea behind the big push theory is that a big or a comprehensive investment package can bring the economy on the path of economic development. And according to uh, Rosenstein, with little amounts of investment or resources, or uh, as he called it, the bit by bit approach, the economy cannot move on to the path of development. That is, a, s a small investment is a mere wastage of resources and it cannot break the vicious cycle, uh, cir circle of poverty. A minimum amount of investment is required to boost the economy. Uh, this theory is based on the uh, idea of external economies. External economies are those unpaid benefits which go to third parties. Eco uh, external economies reduce the average cost of the company. Therefore, it benefits all the firms in the industry. For example, if there are two industries, A and B, and industry A expands, so industry A will derive internal economies. This may result in fall in the price of product of industry A. Uh, now, if industry A's output is industries B input. For example, if industry A is producing shoelaces and industry B produces shoes, then obviously industries A output is industries industry B's input. Then industry B would also benefit because the because of the fallen price of industry A's product. So this is known as pecuniary or monetary external economies. This may further lead to rise in demand for industry A's uh, shoelaces. So A's, industry A's external economies gives rise to profits for industry B and in turn industry B gives rise to profits for industry A in the form of raised demand. Uh, uh, next we are going to see uh, the features of the big push theory. The first feature is the massive investment. In the big push theory, there has to be a huge initial investment at the very beginning of the growth process. Because according to Paul Rosenstein Rodan, uh, a small investment is a wastage of resources. A big, huge investment is required to uh, initiate the growth process. Next feature is investment in different sectors. Now by investing in different channels and different sectors, each channel sustains the growth of one another by providing the demand base as we saw in the uh, shoelace and shoe example. So this leads to balanced growth. Each sector supports uh, another sector. Third is planned industrialization. Now in underdeveloped countries, uh, in most of the underdeveloped countries and less developed countries, agriculture is the dominant sector and they are poor countries with less amount of per capita income, less savings. So planned uh, industrialization re reduces the uncertainties that comes with agricultural production. Now, next, uh, Rosenstein uh, propo proposed three kinds of indivisibilities and economies of scale. So, we are going to take a look at these three indivisibilities. Now, first is indivisibilities of in production function. So, it refers to indivisibilities of input and output and process of production, etc. So he proposed these indivisibilities mainly to see where big push is needed, where big push needs to be applied. So first is your indivisibilities in production function, which includes indivisibilities of input, output, process of production, and it leads to increased returns, that is increased in increase in output, 
in income in employment and it lowers the capital output ratio next thing is very important uh, which is known as social overhead capital now social uh, overhead capital has given has been given uh, more importance in this theory because economies arising from social overhead capitals is very important now social overhead capital what is it actually it's basically infrastructure so it includes the production of infrastructure such as power transport communication and public transport services with the heavy amount of investment on directly productive activities um <clears throat> so exa some examples of uh, social overhead capital is are uh, schools parks hospitals etc uh, now we come to indivisibilities of uh, creating uh, social overhead capitals first is uh, indivisibility of time now once you have initiated such a huge project it is irreversible irreversible in time because it has to be provided before setting up directly productive activities directly productive activities that is dpas the it are it is uh, those investments which leads to direct increase in supply of goods and services so basically if you if you establish a hospital uh from establishing or um from establishing this hospital you have created a uh, an increase in supply of many other goods and services there will be a lot of employment lot of income there will be a rise in welfare as well so uh this is in invisibility indivisibility of time next is indivisibility of durability so uh, we know that infrastructures of such kind last long like schools and parks and hospitals one they have been once they have been made once they have been um, established they will be there for a very long time next is your indivisibility of long gestation period it also these kind of projects also require a very uh, long period of time to finish such projects for example if you are building a road or something it will take a long period of time it can it cannot be completed within a day or two and last is your indivisibility of an irreducible industry mix of public util utilities this simply means that social overhead capital must grow collectively then next we come to indivisible indivisibilities of demand so uh, it basically refers to complementary uh, complementarity of uh, demand and this arises from diversity of human wants so in underdeveloped countries and less developed countries they have small sized markets due to low per capita income and low purchasing power so what to do about it this can be taken care of by expanding market size and by simultaneously setting up interrelated industries for example a shoe factory so uh, let's suppose that there are 100 uh, disguisedly unemployed workers in an underdeveloped country and they are withdrawn and uh, they are employed in a shoe factory now so this would generate an additional income now if they spend all all their newly received income or this newly purchasing power newly purchased power on the shoes if they spend all of this new income on the shoes then an adequate market for the shoe industry would be ensured and what would happen the industry would succeed and survive uh let's try to understand this with the help of an example uh you can see d1 and mr1 curves d1 is the average revenue curve or the demand curve and mr1 is the marginal revenue curve so uh we have mc and ac as well mc is the marginal cost curve ac is the average cost curve now equilibrium will be established where mc 
and MR are equal. So, where MC cuts MR1 is point E1. So, there our equilibrium, our initial equilibrium is established. And corresponding to that, we have P1 price level and OQ1 quantity level. So, price will be OP1 and quantity demanded will be equal to OQ1 because equilibrium established where MR1 is equal to MC. So, in this case, there will be a loss. Why will there be a loss? Because our P1 price, OP1 price level is below AC. AC is our average cost. So, if our revenue, if our price is below average cost, then obviously we will incur losses. So, the losses are right now equal to P1 C A B rectangle. Now, when investment, a uh, huge investment will be made in many industries, then market size will enlarge, market will be extended. So, therefore, demand will rise as shown by curves D4 and MR4. Price will rise to P4 and quantity demanded will rise to OQ4 because now MC cuts MR4 at E where equilibrium is established and corresponding price is P4 and corresponding quantity demanded is Q4 there. Now the uh, the firms, the industry will enjoy profits because average cost is being covered and profits will be equal to our square, uh, our rectangle P4 R S T. You can see the lightly shaded rectangle and the profits will be equal to that rectangle. So therefore, greater investment in so many industries may convert losses to profits. La lastly, we come to our indivisibilities in uh, of uh, supply of savings. So a huge initial investment in a number of industries simultaneously requires a high level of savings obviously but in underdeveloped countries and less developed countries the level of savings is very low therefore a huge in initial investment may be very difficult to achieve therefore when incomes rise due to a uh, rise in investment MPS must be greater than APS. Now what is MPS and what is APS? MPS is marginal propensity to save and APS is average propensity to save. So according to Rosenstein, the way out of the vicious circle of poverty is to first have an increase in income so that marginal, um, uh, marginal rate of savings will be higher than average rate of savings now let's take a look at the mcqs based on our discussion the first question is the theory of big push is based on which of the following ideas the correct option is external economies of scale because uh, we as we discussed uh, the the idea behind the big push theory is that there uh, must be external economies of scale arising from expansion of firms and industries. Next is which of the following is not one of the three indivisibilities in the big push theory. So we studied three indivisibilities. Uh, first was indivisibility in production function. Second was indivisibility of demand and third was indivisibility of supply of savings. So the correct option would be B because indivisibility in investment function is not one of the three indivisibilities in the theory of big push. The next question is external economies refers to. The correct option is unpaid benefits which arise from expansion and go to third parties. Then question number four is in indiv indivisibilities of supply of savings, uh, the correct option is A, marginal propensity to save must be greater than average propensity to save. Otherwise, the level of savings cannot be increased and then in the uh, less developed countries or underdeveloped countries.